It's exciting for me today to see so many people here. It really gives me a lot of hope and encouragement about the future of startups and venture capital and what we're doing here in San Diego. You know, and that's what San Diego Venture Group is all about. I, I hope for those of you who are not members, you will join us and become part of our regular meetings, our networking. If you're not following us on Twitter, uh, or part of our Facebook page or our LinkedIn group. We now have, I think, almost 900 people in the LinkedIn group. Please join us. You'll get my daily tweet. It's an easy way to keep track of what's going on here in San Diego in the venture world. Because um, we're here, we bring great content, we bring great networking, and we're working to bring more venture capital to San Diego. We've actually been fortunate over the last several years as we have several new venture capital firms in town. Domain and Thomas McNerney both moved here to San Diego to take advantage of our great life science deal flow. Lateral, Venrock, August Capital, Sofinova have sought out our great San Diego entrepreneurs and added them to their teams. For those of you who don't know that, all four of those firms have people who live or have offices here in San Diego working on venture capital investments. While Sigma Partners, Pete, and Anthem haven't quite yet opened offices, they have been very active in local financings. I think they've done four or five deals between them in the last year. And we are home to two of the newest venture funds, Biomed Ventures and Correlation Ventures. So while we might not get the press that some of the Silicon Valley firms get, we are in fact making a lot of progress here in San Diego, progress that a lot of other regions are not seeing. And it leaves me with only one question though. What is with all the blue, okay? Could someone do a red logo or something? Because um, it just doesn't add much excitement to the talk. Um, but you know, we don't do this alone. Uh, the Venture Group is dedicated to working with a lot of other organizations here in town, Connect, Biocom, Clean Tech, Sports Innovators, EDC, ComNexus, with the goal of developing a great environment for great companies. We're particularly pleased to help promote a couple new incubators here in town. Janssen Labs, which has an open house this afternoon uh, in conjunction with, with our event, for those of you who want to go up there and Evo Nexus. Qualcomm Labs at Evo Nexus is a new ComNexus Qualcomm collaboration which will bring space, mentoring, and most importantly financial support from Qualcomm to a group of chosen companies. Their first set of applications have a deadline of July 3rd, so if you're a young company or you know a young company that could be of interest to Qualcomm, could, could uh, benefit from the space and mentoring that happens at Evo Nexus, be sure and, and have them check it out. There's information in the program or you can go to their website. To set the stage for our next discussion, I want to give you a quick background on where we are in the venture industry. With Facebook IPO this past month, you know, there's probably been more written about venture capital than in any time in history. Um, I think it was 86, they put Art Rock on the cover of Time Magazine and my kids finally got some clue as to what maybe, perhaps, well, at least that guy had the same job title as dad. Um, so, uh, it, we've really been seeing a lot of change and probably once a month I get a call or a request from a freshly minted MBA or PhD student who wants to go into the venture business. And my first question to them is always, why do you want to go into a shrinking industry? Much like plastics, we are, we, we are not, not a growth industry. Excuse me, the opposite of plastics, we are not a growth industry. If we look at this chart, we see two disturbing trends. The first is that overall commitments to venture capital funds has been falling fairly dramatically over the last five years. Those are the lines in red here. Oh, scratch that. 
Um, anyways, those are the lines in red, and you'll see this is from 2005 to 2011, and you see a pretty big drop off in the commitments to venture funds uh, during that time. At the same time, in the past three years, if you look at the blue bars, you will see that the industry has been investing into companies more than it has been raising. Obviously, that is not a sustainable business model, which implies beyond the, the fudging of data, because it's not an exact science in the venture business, we are likely to see further contraction in the amount of capital going into companies in the, in the near future. At the same time that the size of the pie is shrinking, so too has been the number of firms at the table. Now you see in, in the line there, that's the actual number of venture funds, which once again is a highly hard to determine number. Venture funds don't die. They never die, they slowly fade away. Uh, last year we closed my partner's last fund, it was 18 years old. Um, so, but more importantly, in 2011, the top 25 funds that were raised in 2011 received 75% of all the capital commitments. Those 25 firms averaged $550 million per fund. The balance of the money, some $4.4 billion, was allocated to 144 firms. Anyone be a quick math whiz out there? Mike Kinklar? What is it? That means those 144 firms had an average fund size of only $30 million. So we have this huge gap between the big folks and everybody else. And in the first quarter of 2012, that trend continued. The top three firms raised roughly half the money, just three funds. They averaged $900 million apiece. So it should come as no surprise to an entrepreneur who wants to raise a medium amount of money that it's tough out there. The first 250 k in fact, might be easier than the next $3 million. And how many of those of you are, are there out there where the first 200 you could get? You could find friends, family, or the small fund. Raise your hands. But now, finding that next three million, five million is hard. If you're older and you need to raise 20 million, there's a lot of choices. You know, talk to Tom Tully at Eco ATM. I think he's supposed to hand out money, but I think he just takes it in because it, it really works well for him, you know. Or if you're synthetic genomics, you go out and you raise $140 million. But that in-between area is a really tough place for people to be today. It's also tough for the young venture fund, for the firm that's raised two, maybe three funds and is going out and would really, in, in a different market, maybe raise $150, $200 million. But that's a tough place to be for the, for the venture capitalists today. So to address these and, and other issues, if I can get this to work, if not, we'll just keep on going. Um, We've put together a panel today of both uh, some, some people on the venture side as well on the institutional LP side to come and talk to you about this challenge of being a small or medium-sized venture firm. So I'd like to invite up to the stage Shane Gowdy from Cooley and our panelists, and I'm going to let Shane take it over from there.